Okay, let's go ahead and get started there, folks. Welcome back to another 2 p.m. PST YouTube stream. I'm your host, Strange Bro Jim. And today, uh, well, we got ourselves a little bit of, uh, quite a bit of a lineup. Um, uh, parts of it should have been, uh, should have happened yesterday, and uh, whatever. I, I got mixed around, so. Um, but. Uh, we got ourselves some more Pega Academy to get through. We got ourselves some, um, uh, we have a fairly large topic to cover in the next couple of days um, uh, in Pega Academy. Uh, we have some Unreal later on today, um, or, you know, in the next hour after that. Uh, we got some videos to upload after that. And then um, we're going to be doing some uh, Goat Simulator 3. Now, I should have done Goat Simulator 3 yesterday, but I got turned around, did Star Rail, whatever. For those of you watching Pega, you probably don't really care about that. So, um, I mean, I wouldn't mind if you cared about that a bit. Um, you know, check out my other videos, my other playlists. That would be fantastic. But, um,. But I, I can understand, like, you know, maybe you want to kind of stick with uh, these videos. So, so uh, let me explain what these videos are all about, these uh, Pega certification videos. Well, a little bit about me. Uh, I am, well, currently an unemployed software developer whose last job was working with the Pega environment. Now, I'm not going to give up on, you know, trying to pursue that dream of being a software developer. And, you know, I, ha I hope those of you that are, you know, continuing the series, you know, you don't give up either. You continue working towards that, okay? Um, you know, I'm not gonna stop, uh, neither should you. Now, um, uh, you know, while my last job was in the Pega environment, um, I wasn't able to get my certification for Pega. Um, now, uh, part of that, I kind of blame on the authorized training partner that we had. Um, he really wasn't that great. Um, you know, pretty much everybody in the entire team that he was training went self-study because we were having a hard time with, with the particular trainer. Um, and his coworkers knew about it. Uh, his coworkers knew he was screwing up, but, um, you know, we, we asked to be put back into uh, an additional training cycle, but that never happened. So, um, you know, the one and only time that they told me that I had to take my certification. I knew that I wasn't ready. I failed it. Um, I was already in mid self-study at that point in time, but I knew that I had, I had not covered all the material necessary to pass the certification. But they forced it on me anyway, and I failed it. I mean, I knew that I was going to fail it. Um, you know, I didn't have all the topics covered by that point. But um, that's one of the reasons why I was pretty much asking to be put back into another training cycle so that I could learn with a, another authorized training partner that actually gave a damn. Um, but that never happened, pushed into, uh, contract employment and, um, you know, I was asking for more of a mentor, you know, in that contract, but th they were more along the lines of, hey, we'll answer your questions, and that's it. Not not a full mentor. Uh, now, some might be perfectly fine with that. Um, you know, there are some that can, can ha you know, can do that. You know, I need a little bit more structure. I need a little bit more... Um, mentorship than, than just that. 
um, but I never got it. So, um, but that's what these streams are for. That's what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm focusing on getting to that goal uh, to achieve it, to get that certification so that I can put it on my resume and, you know, I can start applying to those jobs and, you know, get another one. You know, something more than a contractor. You know, maybe a W-2 would be nice. Uh, but we move on. Okay. Now, for those of you that are maybe looking at these videos and going, okay, you know, um, what are you really providing? Well, for for one thing, you know, I'm not an authorized training partner, and this is not an instructor-led training. Okay, I'm studying the certification much like anybody else that might be watching these videos. Okay, if you're watching these videos to get to the certification, you know, continue following me because we're going to be journeying there together. Okay. Um, but um, don't think of me as someone that is, you know, all knowing about PEGA. Um, I don't know everything about PEGA. That's why I'm learning about it. Um, now, if you have any kind of questions concerning the PEGA environment, then feel free to ask them. You know, I will do my best to answer them if I can. If I can't, then I will see about trying to find uh, or, you know, contact my old co-workers and ask them if they know the answer. So, uh, seeing that they um, they have more experience in PEGA than I did. Um, but, um, you know, I'm not meant to be an instructor. You know, don't don't consider me an instructor. Now, if you want to go for the instructor led training, then go ahead and do so. Uh, but know that it's going to be intensive. It, you know, from what I saw, it was a, a two week course for five thousand dollars, so not exactly cheap. Uh, and they're going to throw everything at you for the certification. So know that you're going to be needing to do a lot of note taking, a lot of video recording. And asking a lot of questions because you're gonna want to know everything that there is to know before you hit that certification, because they will throw the kitchen sink at you uh, for that certification. I took it for 8.6. I got Pega 7 questions, so you know, or at least I got a couple Pega 7 questions. So know that um, you're you're gonna be facing a lot when it comes to um, those certifications. Now, you might go, why are you getting PEGA 7 questions? Uh, to be honest, I don't really know why they had PEGA 7 questions for an 8.6 certification. I don't know. But that's but the thing is, is that um, the authorized training partner should have been teaching us those old keywords as well. Okay, Because when you go out to a job, you're going to be seeing uh, developers that have already been in the game for year two three who knows okay they might have stayed like pegas five or something like that you never know okay so they might be addressing they might be saying key words that you're not familiar with so knowing pe previous keywords is going to be helpful to not only yourself but for them as well because then they you can kind of address to them that okay listen you know uh, that old keyword that you're using has been changed to this. Okay, so you're helping them out as well. Okay, so um, so just know, you know, um, it's okay to learn some of the old history, old keywords as well, so you're more prepared when you actually hit that job. Okay, so um, it's just... Uh, my training didn't include that and you know so that's me telling you you know look into it further okay know what you're going to be getting yourself into okay it's not just 8.7 8.8 whatever or you know whatever version that you're watching these videos on okay just know that you're going to want to study some of the old previous versions as well. So you know what you're, you know, what you're going to be experiencing on the job. Okay. So now, 
I'm sending for the system architect. Um, so that's that's where my main goal is. Now, uh, concerning the business architect, it's done. We've already covered on the entire mission for business architect for 8.7. So if you're looking for a business architect certification, we've already covered it. Okay. I've already covered the two missions, the two modules. Those are done out of the way. Now, if if you want, I would suggest these two modules cover the Pega Express delivery. So I would recommend that you go over this particular mission for the Pega Express delivery so that you are aware of you know everything that is concerning that because it's 12% of the certification exam. Okay, according to them. Okay, so be prepared for all the topics concerning that. I don't think these two modules covers it. So do this mission, study up on it so that you'll be better prepared for the business architect certification. Okay. Uh, so let's get into the system architect. We have 15 hours according to them, 15 hours and five minutes. I kind of doubt that because uh, each one of their tasks, topics, and challenges takes a long time. At least me explaining them or talking about them. So, uh, but we are on the Pega UX solutions. So, so let's go into the low code uh, user experience. So, uh, Pega platform is a low code platform. Low code refers to an application building development environment that instead of traditional hard coded computer programming, which is something that you know I've been used to, uh, uses the following technologies, graphical user interfaces, visual metaphors, and form configuration, which obviously you won't normally do with uh, you know the hard coding computer, uh, computer programming. You know, this is more, you know, um, um, code that you can kind of construct with more of a visual uh, than anything else. Um, you know, I was, I was about to already to say Visual Studio, but that's not exactly the right, uh, you know, that's, that's the IDE Visual Studio. Um, there is a programming language um, that is very similar in nature in that it uses a graphical user interface to kind of get things done. Um, what was it? It's been years since I touched upon it um, because most people don't really, or I haven't seen too much need for it, but then again, what the hell do I know, right? Um, Visual Basic, I think it was. Um, uh, we move on though. It is primarily an exercise in user experience that Pega pioneered many years ago. Pioneer? Mm, I don't know about that, but uh, it remains a large pillar of Pega core values. Uh, the Pega platform author uh, authoring experience occurs in specialized studios. The studios embrace low code, uh, although each uses a different approach. Uh, the App Studio is primarily for the following users, business analysts, application developers, front-end developers, and data engineers. In App Studio, users sketch out the highest level app concepts and add details later. Dev Studio is primarily for experienced users in the following roles. Why they are messing up on their bullet points, I don't really know, but uh, application developers, account admins, and secu security admins. In the Dev Studio, users create many pieces through rules, rule forms, and connects connects them to form a coherent application. For the most part, users work from the bottom to the top. That is, details first, then big picture. Um, which you you kind of should be doing personally you know you always want to build that foundation first before you even construct the building in the first place right you know um but you know let's not forget you know that you might want to use like a cad design that building first <laughs> you know 
Uh, then you build the foundation, and then you can build the rest of the building. And then you can make it all pretty afterwards, okay? But, you know, if, you, if you're not doing the designing, then you're going to screw up on the construction. If you screw up on the foundation, the building's not going to hold and it's going to tear itself apart. If you mess up on the, you know, construction of said building, the building is going to fall down upon itself and hurt a lot of people. So, you know, making it all pretty, oh, sure, that's, that might be, you know, nice. But if, it, if that building crashes down upon you, it doesn't matter how much, <laughs> how pretty you make it. <laughs> so, you know. Okay, six user interface um, principles for the App Studio. Add value as fast as possible. App Studio is designed to get results when while saving the time. Yeah, but at the same time, you want to make sure that the, um, the quality is there too. You know, it's, it's one thing to, you know, try to speed up the process to get, you know, um, uh, more results faster, right? But if you mess up on the quality, then it doesn't matter what your fast results are going to get you. You're going to be having shit quality and everything is going to tear itself apart. So, um, so fast is good, but, you know, make sure that you do it in a in a fashion where you get the best results no matter what, you know. If you're sacrificing quality for the speed, then you're going to have, um, you know, um, what's the, you know, it's that one, you know, think of, uh, if you've never seen the movie before, think of uh, Ratatouille, you know, uh, Disney Pixar movie, or it was a Pixar, I don't know. Um, you know, they're in a restaurant, they're cooking the food, um, you know, they're in this one fancy restaurant that, you know, everybody loves, right? You know, you have this one, you know, famous chef that, you know, everybody loved kind of thing. And, you know, they're kind of using his recipes to, um, you know, keep the restaurant going and, you know, uh, like a major restaurant, right? Uh, but one of the cooks wanted to put the recipes in a factory, basically make it canned. And basically everybody was saying that it's pretty much shit food. It was it was terrible food uh, in comparison to the restaurant food, which, I mean, let's, let's face it, that's pretty much, you know, <laughs> that pretty much goes for pretty much any kind of canned food, right? You know, you'd get typically get better quality out of the restaurant versus and canned, right? Um, so same kind of thing. It's like, sure, you might be uh, saving time, saving money, you know, factoring crap food and cans, um, but you're not going to have the same kind of quality out of it. So lots of food that is, tastes bad versus... You know, little food that tastes fantastic. That's, you know, you know, you know, explodes people's minds, you know. Now, obviously, you would like to, you know, um, you know, one way to kind of go about doing that is seeing if you can get like a middle ground. You know, sure, you might not get the the best quality overall, you know, per se. But at the same time, you might be able to make, you know, more food faster, depending on how fast you can make it, right? So, um, you know, like, what kind of amazed me at one point in time was, uh, you know, when I worked at McDonald's, you know, my 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 brain was always like, oh yeah, you you know you flip a burger, you know you 
grill it on one side, flip the burger, grill it on the other side, you know, just as long, right? Well, you know, at as a, you know, when you do cooking at McDonald's, for example, they had a way where you put the patties down on the lower grill, and then you can slam down this uh, another grill that they had, pretty much, you know, on, on the top. So you're basically smashing the patties in between two grills, cooking both, uh, both sides of the patty at the same time for pretty much equal amount of time, right? You had it, you had it time, so it would, you know, cook the patty, you know, thoroughly on both sides, you know, and you, you pretty much have that burger ready to go. Um, you know, like the, like George Foreman grills or something like that, you know, same, same kind of concept, you know, two, uh, two heating sources put on both sides of the patty to cook it, you know, um, equally on both sides for the same, you know, for, you know, um, a given amount of time. And there you go, you know, instead of, you know, taking one side of the patty, cook it for what are five minutes, right? Let's just put an arbitrary n um, amount out there, and, you know, and now you have to flip it over to cook it for, so let's say, you know, not, let's say another five minutes, you know, just for the hell of it, right? So now you're spending like 10 minutes for that one patty, right? Whereas if you do grills on both sides, now you're taking that five minutes of grill time, and now it's only five minutes because you're grilling both sides and both of it at the same time. So there are ways of, of doing things faster if you're innovative enough, right? So, you know, that's what they're kind of doing here is they're trying to innovate enough so that, you know, they make things a little bit faster overall to get, you know, a job done. Yeah, but at the same time, it's not always the best, so. Okay, so reduce the number, n number of concepts. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, Dev Studio has more than 200 rule types. App Studio has fee key, uh, five key constructs. But I mean, you're still going to be needing to do use your Dev Studio to get some of the work done. So, you know, uh, contextualize for user needs. Creating an integration in Dev Studio requires opening approximately six different rule types and understanding how the rules are connected to each other. App Studio has all the rule types on one page. Use defaults. Pega presumes that the fast app creation method is to build on defaults rather than start from blank values. With each new application and template, Pega apps use the following defaults. Channels, data objects, rules with every new application and templates. I mean, there there is, there is something to be said about um, defaults, okay? Um, you know, um, you know, think of um, standardization, you know, uh, computers, standardization, and so on and so forth, okay? Uh, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for standardization, then you're going to have, like, computer makers d going off and doing their own kind of thing, and, you know, the parts for one computer aren't going to be compatible with, you know, in parts for another computer, okay? Uh, Apple, for the longest time, didn't want to conform to, you know, the standardization of other PCs, okay? So, for the longest time, it didn't want to do anything with, um, like, Intel or anything that would allow for Windows to be placed on the Apple computers, Okay? Now, some might say that, it, that 
the fact that they were kind of ignoring that it, it was great for Apple because they could do what they wanted to do to um, you know keep their products the way they wanted to have them made or built or whatnot and then others were like going well how are we supposed to um, customize Apple computers and Apple was basically saying well you can't you know you're gonna have to take it back to the store and we're gonna have to rebuild it for you or you know replace the parts for you and stuff like that and a lot of people didn't really like that reason and didn't like that um, restriction you know so so I mean like I said there's there's some you know positives and then there's also some negatives in there as well so you know um, can you find the middle ground uh, provide familiar tools and terminology dev studio uses pega only terminology pega only terminology well I don't know about that I mean a lot of you're you're using a lot of Java terminology as well but whatever App Studio uses industry standard terminology. For example, harness versus page or rule versus object. And yet, why you don't use industry standard terminology throughout the entire thing, I don't really know. But whatever, we, we move on, okay. Especially that rule versus object, it's like, why <laughs> you know uh, if you're if you're using if if Pega is based off of Java why change the name from you know from object to rule whatever we move on uh, push the boundaries of UX design uh, Pega believes that you simplify anything, including high, a highly complex technology such as machine learning and ro robotic automations. I mean, that's that's obviously really good to do. You know, use the, you know, um, you know, use defaults to your advantage. You know, if if someone's if someone's repeating a step over and over and over again, then you know, allow for them to uh, do that faster. You know, find those steps, have them click like one simple button and it does all those steps all over again. You know, you can use macros, for example, as, as one of those, you know, possibilities of redoing steps over again to get to a certain point. Um, you know, that's that's one way. Um, you know, AI does that, you know, all the time kind of a thing, like, you know, um, or at least, you know, simple AI, I should say, uh, I should put, you know, uh, where it comes to like, you know, you could design a, a very simple AI that, you know, if you're like doing any kind of like game programming, for example, you're having an AI kind of walking towards a wall, right? Well. Uh, are you going to have the AI just keep on walking against the wall and just kind of going, you know, face, face into the wall and not do, not turn at all? I mean, you can do that if you wanted to, or you can have it do an about face and walk the other way, walk right into another wall, whatever. You can do that if you want to. Um, you know, a better way is like, hey, you come up to a wall, are you going to turn left or you're going to turn right? You know, you could code it so that, hey, they come to a wall, they will always turn right, no matter what. So they'll just kind of, you know, go into a wall, turn right, another wall, turn, 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 you know. So they they could basically be doing a box, right? Um, or they hit a wall, and then you kind of put a random position in there and say 50% they go left. 50% they go right. You could do it that way. Or maybe 51% they do or go right and 49% they go left. Whatever. 
it's all up to you as to how you want to kind of design um you know the ai along those lines um you know think of it this way um um ford you know um he built cars faster using the assembly line because he was seeing the fact that hey if i can get you know if i can get the car built you know uh you know and i can have individuals just kind of putting on the parts at their particular stations then i can churn out more cars faster than having just trying to get like an entire team to try to build one um one at a time kind of thing right or you know having a couple people you know trying to handle everything you know so now he's having you know individual people handling one part of building the car than having like five people trying to build the entire car right and now he's able to build more cars. So um, now some of it, some of it might have dropped in quality because it might have they might have pushed for more speed to try to get more cars out, but they were able to get more cars out there. So so. Uh, App Studio is low code while Dev Studio is not. No, well, that's true. Um, Dev Studio isn't completely low code, there, guys. It's not completely low code. Dev Studio is not completely low code. <sighs> because I mean there's there's parts of it where you're going to have to actually build the code if you if you don't have um you know you know, if you don't have, like, the right kind of, you know, process that you can do through App Studio or, you know, the, the low code of Dev Studio. There's still parts of Dev Studio that you can't do just low code. Right, but they want to say, yeah, sure, App Studio is, uh, App Studio, no, I mean, I agree, App Studio is indeed low code. That's, there's no problem with that. But that doesn't mean that Dev Studio is completely devoid of code. You know, you know, you have to deal with more code in Dev Studio than, you know, App Studio. You, you know, you hardly do anything with code. Dev Studio, you just might. So, whatever. All right. But they want you to do false on that. Sure. Whatever. It's like, hey, you have application developers. And guess what application developers are going to be doing? A lot of coding. <laughs> you know. Um, you know, uh, take for example, you know, they had they have one like one very simple challenge. Um, it was like what? Like about three challenges ago or so, where they were like talking about how, you know, a, a senior, um, um, senior Pega architect built this code, and it was just like a simple if statement, right? You know, we kind of talked about that one a little bit more, and I was like on, and it's like, you know, typically that, that kind of code wouldn't really be going to a senior. If it was just going to the senior, that's pretty sad. 
um, that's the kind of code that I would see at you know very newcomer system architect in my particular in my personal opinion. Okay, that's not low code. <laughs> that's pure code. <laughs> and guess what? Who did it? In Dev Studio. So. So while sure Dev Studio might want to say that they embrace low code, that doesn't mean that they are low code. So I don't really agree with that, but that's me. Okay. Um I think I'm going to have to hold off on the rest and the next topic for next time. Uh, because we're going to be getting into the Pegacosmos design system here. Um, and uh, while it doesn't look like there's a lot here uh, for the most part, there might be a lot like kind of contained in it. So I don't really want to... Um, you know, I, I need to be careful with, you know, they, they say that, you know, this page or, you know, this page and the following other pages are 15 minutes in length. So let's not risk it. Okay. So we'll cover this one tomorrow. Um, so with that being said, I think that's going to be where we uh, go ahead and cut this particular video off at this point. Um, you know, continue progressing through certification. Keep on keeping track of the videos that I put out on YouTube. Um, I got a little behind on the uh, um, getting Pega videos out. I need to take care of that. Um, uh, got a quite a number of videos that I need to um, upload. But that's going to have to hold off until next time. Uh, but that's going to be it for today's uh, Pega videos. Uh, we're going to be going moving on to um, Unreal Engine in just a bit. Uh, I need to. We're going to need to see where we're going to be going in terms of the Unreal. Um, but I'm going to hold off on that until Blackheart um, comes on in for that. So. Um, so if you're with me right now on stream, uh, then stick with me. Uh, we're going to be switching on over to that in just a minute or two. Uh, well, I mean, I'm going to continue streaming. So, I mean, um, so there's that. Um, but for those of you that are watching on, you know, on YouTube for the videos, uh, I thank you for continuing to uh, stick with me on this. Um, if this is the first video that you're watching, you know, I have other videos, playlists, you know, an entire playlist of these style videos, um, you know, ready for you to consume if you want to, um, check those out, you know, check out my other playlists, which are pretty much mainly gaming for the most part. But I mean, if you have an interest in any one of those games, check those videos out. Um, and then, um, um, you know, help me out with the YouTube algorithm would be fantastic. You know, the whole liking and subscribing would be, uh, would be indeed fantastic. Uh, check out the description for, uh, other links such as social media, Patreon, uh, my stream team, um, that's all down there. So, uh, have a look at those if you're interested in any of that. Um, and that's it. That's where we're going to go and end it. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully I catch you next time. But until then, take care. Have a good night. Stay healthy. Stay safe. And I'll catch you next time.